All right, engineers, so let's continue our discussion on this four-part series on the descending tracks. If you guys haven't already seen it, go watch the video on the um, vestibular spinal tract. In this video, we're going to focus on the ponto reticular spinal tract. Now, you guys are going to like this because I have these guys set up in a specific order to where we can remember them easy. Okay, we'll talk about it towards the end. But the ponto reticular spinal, what is its overall function? That's what I want you guys to remember. So the big things that I want you guys to get out of this is not only the, the descending fibers, the pathway itself, but to remember what is its function? What does it do? Because in situations in which these, these actual muscles aren't carrying out that function, we might think, hey, it might be something wrong with the ponto reticular spinal tract. So we should always understand what the overall function of it is and not get too caught up in all these actual uh, descending fibers and mix of mess that we can see here. So the ponto reticular spinal, what is its big function? It's primarily for activating extensor muscles. So you're gonna love that, right? So extensor muscles, that is its main function is to innervate the extensor muscles. So, if you can remember, vestibular spinal and ponto reticular spinal, they perform the same function. The ponto reticular spinal is more of an assister, though. It's helping, it's assisting the lateral vestibular spinal tract and medial vestibular spinal tract in this extension muscles, right? The extensor muscles. But now, ponto reticular spinal, if you remember, I've talked about it in a bunch of different videos. You have a kind of a mixture of gray and white matter structure that extends all the way from the midbrain down to the medulla. It's called the reticular formation. It's important of basically alerting our cerebral cortex and arousing it, or letting it know what's the most important stimulus at that point of time. But there's some special nuclei that are located within the pons that are important for this actual descending tract. So in the pons, they're gonna have some special nuclei here you're gonna have some special nuclei. And what these guys do is they send down these descending fibers. Okay, so they have these descending fibers. We already know that. Okay, so if we, we bring this guy down, right? So coming from the actual pons, the reticular formation within the pons, we're going to have these descending fibers coming down here. And as they come down, we're being particular, these guys come more within the kind of like the ventral, right? The ventral white column here. So they're gonna come down more along the lines of the ventral white column. So they're gonna descend down through the ventral into the ventral white column. Now, as they're doing that, they give off collaterals, right? They give off their termination sites to these different cell bodies within the anterior or ventral gray horn. Then from here, it can continue. Maybe it's one, it wants to go down a couple more spinal cord levels, right? Because it can supply many, many different types of spinal cord levels. And this is gonna go here. And this will also go, bring this one a little bit more over here. This one will also go right here. And this one will go right here. Right, so it's gonna be able to supply this anterior or this ventral gray horn. Now. When these fibers, these descending ponto reticulospinal tract goes down, it descends right into the actual ventral or anterior white column. It gives off its extensions into the anterior ventral gray horn. To what? It's gonna go and supply, again, what type of structures here? Gamma motor neurons, right? And it's also gonna supply alpha motor neurons. And these gamma, and alpha motor neurons are gonna do what? They're gonna go out and stimulate the different extensor muscles. So this is why this is important, okay, to remember this stuff. It's basically the important thing is to remember what is its overall function. So if you compare, you combine these two together, the vestibular spinal tract and the ponto reticular spinal tract, remember that they both are supplying extensor muscles. The actual nucleus for this originates within the pons, Part of the reticular formation descends down through the anterior or ventral white column and then synapses on the cell bodies of the anterior or ventral gray horn via the alpha motor neurons and the gamma motor neurons. Then from that, these guys can go out to different types of extensor muscles. And so when it supplies these extensor muscles, remember, what is the alpha motor neuron doing? It's causing the contraction of the extrafusal muscle fibers Right, it's causing contraction of the extrafusal muscle fibers and the gamma is causing the contraction of the intrafusal muscle fibers to keep those muscle spindles taut. Now, 
Now that we understand the ponto reticulospinal and the vestibulospinal tract, I want you guys to remember to combine these two together. They're very pretty. Very pretty. And what is it? Vestibulospinal for the very and the pretty for the ponto reticulospinal. These two are primarily important with extensor function. All right, so last thing here. I want you guys to remember something. Okay, so we, we know the pathway, we know what it's serving. Now, in the vestibulospinal tract, we said that there was a specific uh, stimulation for it, right? Whether it was coming from the uh, vestigial nucleus in the cerebellum or whether it was coming from the inner ear structures. Well, this is constantly getting information from ascending tracts. So you know there's ascending tracts that are coming up here, right? We've talked about them many different times. There's different ascending tracts. We talked like you have the dorsal column, uh, medial luminiscal pathway. We'll also have the spinal thalamic tract. There's so many different. There's the spinal reticular tract. But the whole purpose is that as those ascending tracts were coming upwards, they give off collaterals to the reticular formation. That can then cause stimulation to these actual nuclei here within the pons to send down these descending fibers to go to different extensor muscles. And again, as they're traveling down, they go through the anterior or ventral white column and then go to the extensor muscles. Now, I didn't mention it in the vestibulospinal tract. I should have done that. I wasn't specific enough, but remember, these actual vestibulospinal tracts, they're also going within the anterior or ventral white column. Okay, so don't forget that also. Okay, so now, now that we know that, we've pretty much covered everything we would need to know about the ponto reticulospinal tract. I hope it made sense. In the next video, in part three of this, we're actually gonna talk about the rubrospinal tract. Hope to see you guys there.